Hi, I'm Ben, a Technical Enablement Manager here at Sage. And in today's video, I'm going to be walking you through a project that myself and Mark have been working on recently. In order to improve the speed with which you can get going once you've got your test account sorted out, and after listening to feedback from some of our developer partners, we've created a Postman collection that when used with a runner and some data that we've put together, will allow you to add test data to your account in around 20 minutes. We have a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide on developer.sage.com, but we also felt it would be great to have a video guide to accompany it. Let's switch over to the computer and I'll show you what we've been up to. So we are on developer.sage.com and what we will do first of all is I'll show you where the actual guide is. So it's embedded currently within the quick start guide here. And you can see on the left hand side in this navigation we have two new sections, one for test data preparation and there's a second page there to post your test data. So this is where you'll want to come when you want to try this yourself. And so essentially some things we need to cover off first that you need to make sure you have. And so at the moment this option is only available to a accounting plus UK VAT registered business. So it's really important that you understand that the data itself is currently catering towards a UK business. Not to say that it won't work in other environments, we would need to test that going forward. The next will be the Postman environment file, data creation collection, and also the JSON files creating the data that we're going to actually import into your business itself. Now, as another section in another video that I've covered before about running in, in Postman, we have the same button set up here. And so what you can do is actually just click the option, identify that I want to add this to Postman for Mac. You'll see test data. And what that's done straight away is added two things. First of all, upon the right hand side, you can see we have the SBC accounting data creation environment that's been added. And also we have a collection, which you can see here, which has some different requests in, initial requests that we need to do, things for bank accounts, contacts, and then the individual transaction types as well. So if we pop back to the guide for a second, you can also see further down we have the option to manually import the files. So you've got the collection and the environment file links there. You do have the option to import data either from the file menu or you can choose import here and you can drag and drop into this area or click upload files and manually browse to the location that you downloaded. We pop back to the guide. See a couple of things that you need to be aware of. First of all, we need to get the data itself and you can download that by clicking the link here and that will give you a, a zip file including the data files. The next thing we need to do is to go back into Postman and start to prepare it. As you saw me do at the start, we've got to make sure that we've chosen this environment file, the SBC accounting data creation in the top right. And the next is to ensure that we're in this collections tab on the left hand side. If you are using an older version of Postman, um, they did recently update the UI for this, so it might look a little bit different. So the first place that we need to go within the collection itself is this first request here, this initial auth request. And all we're going to do is use this solely for a, a valid refresh token that we'll be using throughout the request process. And that will become clearer in a little bit. So first of all, we want to come to this auth tab on the left hand side. It's always best to ensure that you've made sure you've got no cookies before we go through this process. So once you've closed that cookie screen, we've made sure that we have none and everything's cleared down. We scroll down. What we have to do is make sure that there is a callback URL currently entered here. Now, as you can see on mine, that there, there isn't. And Unfortunately, it seems to be a side effect of using uh, the run in Postman button where if you manually import the files, and this is what I was referring to earlier, the callback URL will be present. But if you use the run in Postman option, it's 
easier in that it gives you the environment and the collection, you know, in just a couple of clicks. But it does mean you do have to paste in this callback URL. So that's a little frustrating, but that's a gotcha for you just to, to watch out for. And really, that's all we need to do to actually start and get our refresh token. So the next stage will be to come down to where we have get new access token here. And we'll simply click that. And we'll get it on, I'll just drag that in. Get our box to authenticate there. So I'll just put my details in here. We'll go ahead and log in. And we will allow the application. Fantastic. So we've authenticated successfully and that process should be exactly the same for you, except you'll pop in the specific email address and password for your trial account or for the business that you've created. And when we go into the actual token details themselves, at this point, you would probably think the access token is what we're looking for. But no, what we're going to do, if we just scroll down. So I'll just go and scroll down and highlight all of the refresh token there and I'm just going to use command C because while I'm recording this there seems to be a bit of an issue um, with using the the, the area that I've, I've documented on developer.sage.com but what you can do is actually right click this refresh token and there should be a menu pop up and an option to choose set SBC accounting data creation so in the environment that we created and you can set it as the refresh token value so you can do that or well, for the sake of this video while I'm in here now, I'm just going to manually update it because it wasn't working before. Just paste that in just to make sure. Fantastic. And at this stage, that's the first part of this process complete. Next, we'll move on to posting the test data itself. So in order to use the Postman runner, what we'll do, we'll just close down this initial auth request don't need to save that for now you just simply need to highlight the collection on the left hand side and then you'll see an option at the top of the main window to choose run and what that does is it will list the runner tab and it will show you a list of all the requests in the collection that are available to process so just to, to point out a few things we don't want to run all of these requests in order all at once. We will have to deselect them and select certain ones. And I've detailed all of that in terms of the process uh, on developer.sage.com in that quick start guide. But essentially where you would start, if we just deselect all of them at this first stage, the first three sections either get data from your business in order to update some variables that we have in the collection, looking at things like your ledger accounts, and also ensuring that the financial settings, so things like your um, your financial year dates are appropriate to the data that we're looking to import. So if we start out by selecting just the first three, tra the three requests rather, we don't need to select any data at this point, but we can simply just click run SBC accounting data creation. And you can see on the right hand side here, we're getting 200 okay. And that's all ran through. So what you can do, if you see this run again, a new option, if you just click new, that will bring you back to the Postman runner itself. The next section we're going to look at is bank accounts. And as you can see, there are two requests listed here that refer to them. The first being the post bank accounts. This one will require a data file. And what we're going to do is take the information in that data file and we're going to make post request to create certain bank accounts. And then the next request that you can see here to get bank data, that will be retrieving the relevant IDs of those bank accounts. So we'll just come across and choose select file. And one key thing when you've downloaded the, the data file, the zip file itself, just make sure you extract that into a directory you know about. And so we'll click on that there. And we're looking for the bank accounts JSON file. And you can see that's in here. You can leave everything else exactly as it stands 
and you can see it's going to run the six records that it's going to process so let's run the runner there and see what happens fantastic so you can see here we've got 201 created for all the posts and okays for the gets and on the right hand side you can see that it lists all of the different iterations so effectively each record it's going to go through of each uh, of each file in the request so if we go back to new and we can move on to the next one and you're probably getting the idea at this point that all we're doing is choosing the contacts next again we're going to post in new contacts and then we'll be getting the key data that we need for the rest of it from the contacts such as IDs and things like that and as I said on developer.sage.com there is a table shown in the documentation that outlines precisely what order you need to do this in and also which files you need to choose for each type of request so again we're going to go to the contacts here select contacts.json click open and you see now we're going to add 45 contacts into the business and let's get running And you can see again across the top, 201s, 200s, everything seems to be going through exactly as we hoped. And for the sake of the video, I will speed this process up. And that's completed there without any issues at all, so that's good. We'll go to New again. And the last one that we need to do is opening balance transactions so we'll go we'll choose the file for opening balances you see there's 29 that we're posting here and we'll start that runner off and when I say that it's the last one that we, we must do the rest of the transaction types are they're not exactly required it's, it's up to you whether or not you want to add them or not um, obviously we would say go ahead and, and the more data you've got the more you can work with um, but if there is just specific modules certain areas that you're wanting to work with then you only need to use obviously the relevant uh, requests to input the right uh, transaction types for that area so for examples if you were just looking at sales you would just post the sales invoices and perhaps sales credits it's entirely up to you again we've got this other transaction types and again I should point out that for the rest of these requests it is simply all post requests so we need a data file for each one so we highlight other transaction types select the file and for these it's going to be other payments it's the only other thing I should point out and then we say run And that's your other payments or the transactions done. So we'll say new. And as I say, sales invoices, select the file. I'm going to choose sales invoices, open. It's 210, so this one will take a little while. Go and get yourself a cup of tea, and I'll run that again. One unfortunate side effect of the use of pre-request scripts and a reliance on a Postman runner is that should you encounter any errors throughout the process, you can have an issue where the refresh token that we are utilizing as part of the pre-request scripts becomes no longer valid. If that happens and you go to make a subsequent request, you will see a lot of 401 unauthorized errors returned. If that occurs, simply stop the run and go back to your initial auth request and repeat the steps we went through at the beginning in order to get a new valid refresh token. So in the case of this, I will simply copy this refresh. And overwrite the existing and save. So we go back to the runner, I've changed nothing. And 
and as you can see that is now successfully running through as we hoped it would. And that's the sales invoices done. So that one does take quite a while because there is 210 transactions that it enters in. And as you can see here, we've got credits, purchase invoices, purchase credits, contact payments, and journal transactions as well left to post. And I'll just speed through this just because it's fairly self-explanatory at this stage, I hope. But essentially, again, last time I'll go through it. Click on the particular request you want. Select the file based on the table, and it is fairly self-explanatory. Sales credits, open, and then run. let it run through and just keep repeating that process until you have all the different transaction types entered in that you want. And that's purchase invoices done. So just credits. Select that file, purchase credits, open, go. Contact payments, contact payments.json and run. And last but not least, we have our journals as well. And that's it. All of the data that we can import is complete. So just two other things to mention. The, the first being that unfortunately at the moment we don't have uh, products and services listed in the collection. Um, and that is something that we're looking to add in the future. The second of which we do hope that sometime in the future we'll be able to get the collection up onto GitHub um, and look to try to collaborate with the community, with, with you guys if possible, um, you know, because there may well be some better ideas that you have or the bits that you would like to add or, or even further transactions or, you know, anything like that. And it'd be really good to try and work as a community to try and improve this overall experience for everybody. So as I said at the start, head over to developer.sage.com and check out the quick start guide to look at these reviewed pages. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, um, obviously reach out uh, through the community forum if there's any questions around this, we'll be happy to help as well. So I'm sure you'll agree, this is a step forward giving you access to data to work with straight away with very little effort. We really hope that this is going to help to improve your experience working with our accounting API right from the start. Take care and see you in the next one.